Hi, my name is Chris Munson, and I'm just going to quickly walk through uh, how to create uh, a particle system that will morph from one object into another object. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right into this here. First thing I'm going to do is delete the uh, default cube and add in a text object, because we're going to have one word morph into another word. Um, so we'll just do Blender, and then duplicate this and artists. Okay. Next thing we need to do is convert these both into meshes because we can't add particle systems onto uh, text objects. So uh, we'll go ahead and convert that to a mesh, convert that to a mesh, and now we're good to go. Um, so we're gonna select the first object here and go to the particles panel. We're gonna add in a particle system and we want all the particles in this to be uh, in the scene at the very first frame so we'll go ahead and set that to one um, lifetime doesn't matter on this uh, so we'll just leave that alone and then we'll set um, the distribution to be random uh, so initial placement looks good next thing we need to do is um, make it so that the the particles are static and not actually moving or doing anything. So we'll set the velocity to be zero here, we'll set physics to be none, and um, under field weights here we will set um, all of the the forces to be off. And then we'll just come in and do the same thing for this uh, second particle system here on the second object. So everything's in the first frame, we randomize that, uh, velocity is zero, no physics, and I'm going to turn off uh, all the forces. Okay, so that's basically what we need to do for those two objects. Next thing we have to do is we have to add in a control object. Um, so I'm just going to add in a cube. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you add in. Um, so long as it's something that can have a particle system on it. You could probably make it work by putting another particle system on top of one of these. Uh, it Just for ease of access later, it works better for me to have a separate object. Uh, so do it however you want. Um, it'll probably work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is on this cube I'm going to add in another particle system. And once again we want all of our particles to be in at the first frame. And the lifetime on this actually does matter. What the lifetime does here is it controls the overall length of the uh, the simulation. So um, it is the length it takes it to morph from one object to the, uh, the final object. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll come down to physics here and select keyed. And what this does is it lets us specify the uh, the objects that we want to move between or more accurately the particle systems that we want it to move between because it's taking one particle system uh, and then using that as uh, basically a keyframe and interpolating between it to another uh, particle system. So we'll go ahead and add in uh, the first particle system we want to do and we'll select the text object that we added in first here and it's just using the first particle system it finds on that. You can specify this here if you have more than one. And we'll add in the second one right here and there we go. We got text or particles moving between the two uh, pieces of text. Um, so what we'll do to make this a little bit uh, nicer is we'll just go ahead and um, kind of sit this over the top here and then I'm going to come up into the outliner here and uh, just turn off these two objects, um, turn off their visibility. So now we no longer see them, we no longer see the particles that were associated with them, we just see the effect that we have going here with it morphing from one object to the other. Uh, and now with this you can also uh, use forces on it to uh, throw the particles out uh, in uh, midway between the the two keyframes there uh, and then have it end on a certain point. You can 
stack up a whole bunch of different particle systems in a row and uh, have it move between a whole bunch of uh, shapes. You could um, use this as the uh, the particle system to drive a smoke simulation. I mean, there's there's tons of stuff you can do with it, and it's really really easy and creates some really cool looks. So uh, I hope this was helpful for you. And if there's uh, any questions you have, uh, feel free to shout them out, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Thanks for watching.